We have been talking about uh, Big M and uh, problems that uh, are associated with uh, uh, cases in which you are dealing with uh, problems that do not have a basic feasible solution as a starting point. Um, and examples and samples that we have seen are problems similar to something like that in which your feasible region does not include the origin as such. Uh, we would start the problem at an infeasible um, extreme point and continue until we reach a feasible extreme point. And we showed you a technique which was called Big M. And Big M started by saying, okay, start with a basic, with, with an infeasible uh, extreme point. And from there, keep moving toward feasible region. By moving toward feasible region, you would eventually hit one of the feasible points. And from that point, it's a, st it's a regular simplex. But in theory, if your feasible region is something like that, and you have a bunch of lines in here, you have a bunch of lines in here that go like that, and this is your optimal solution, in reality, it can start from here, go here, go here, go here, go here, go here, and then go here and here. So it can actually stay infeasible all the time until it reaches the optimal solution. In practice, it doesn't happen like that. But in theory, you can. Which means all the time, until you reach the optimal solution, you're infeasible. Which after two hours of work, if somebody asks you, do you have a solution? You say no, because the solution that I have is infeasible. The other thing is that for those of you who have practiced Big M, you have noticed the biggest problem with Big M is that Z line with those M's involved and multiplication and addition, just that one line. It's because of the involvement of those M's in there and the way that they break down into uh, fractions and so on. Besides, that value of M, we will put it as M, but when you want to put it in computer, those of you who want to put it in Excel, Excel says, what? M? What? M plus 1? Because that's a symbolic calculation. It can't do M plus 1 plus 2 M plus 5. Can't do that. It needs values. And based on that, you have to give it a number. Well, you say it's a very large number. So what is a very large number? 10,000. Most of the problems that you have seen, we have put on the board, it says 2x1, 3x2, 5x something. Those numbers are small, minus something. And when you put a 10,000, a million value in there, and then you say m plus 1, a million plus 1, divided by a 5, and then you have 3 million plus 7 divided by 11. When you make those numbers, when you actually process those numbers, most of them tend to be different in the decimal portion of the values. And if you round them off, they all end up to be similar the same way. They may be different in the actual value. When, you, when we keep it as 17m minus 8 divided by 11, we can say whether this is larger than 16m plus 10 divided by 19. We can say that. 
we will just look at the values and we can say that but for the but for the actual um, round of her these are killers so a different technique is used in which the difference is simple in big M we start in feasible we have our eye on the optimal solution and we move toward the optimal solution in this technique we start in feasible but we have our eye on a feasible extreme point so we are trying to reach a feasible extreme point that is the difference big M doesn't care whether you are feasible or infeasible it tries to optimize this technique that we are going to talk about will start in feasible but it will try to reach you to a feasible point and as soon as you reach the feasible point then it says ah regular simplex because regular simplex requires a basic feasible solution to start with the way to do this is simple we approach the problem from this concept to say okay I have a bunch of artificial variables in this problem a bunch of artificial variables I need to get rid of these artificial variables because if the artificial variables are zero then I have a basic feasible solution I need to get uh, rid of these artificial variables so instead of dealing with the original objective function big M deals with the original objective function this technique says instead of working with the original objective function let me make a new objective function and that new objective function is summation of all these variables all these uh, artificial variables and because I just say summation of artificial variables it would be R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 whatever that I have in there with the coefficient of 1 so the numbers are very simple there's no M involved there's nothing uh, of that nature involved but again this technique will take you to a basic feasible solution not to the optimal solution it would try to get you to the basic feasible solution and at that point it says you're on your own regular simplex so in this technique that we call it two phase we will break the problem into two phases phase one is to find a basic feasible solution and phase two is use the basic feasible solution in one and optimize your original problem may be maximization or minimization doesn't make any difference whatever it is we work with that but phase one problem is always a minimization problem because you want to minimize the summation of the artificial variable if you minimize them if you minimize a bunch of greater than or equal zero values and it ends up to be zero what does it mean it means every one of them is zero you add a bunch of positive or equal zero numbers and if it, it ends up to be zero then you have all of them zero so phase one problem has minimize and we noted by z prime to just make it different than 
the regular z of the summation of all r i's. Now the, the rest of the problem is exactly the same way that you did for the big M, which means you get the regular problem, you convert it into standard form, and then you add artificial variables. When you add artificial variables, you are not standard form. Everybody keeps putting those and with the name standard form at the top of it. That's not a standard form. Standard form is when you add the slack variables. Add, subtract, slack variables. That's a standard form. The techniques that you are going to be using are the ones that make a difference in big M and in two phase. In both of them you add artificial variables. In big M you process the objective function differently than two phase. So we will write the problem in this format and then we will put them in the tableau. But just like big M, just like big M, in this case, in this case, you start with the tableau which is not legitimate. Again, you can process the work outside the tableau or inside the tableau. You start with a tableau which is not legitimate and you need to process it to make it legitimate. After you make it legitimate, you keep working just like a regular simplex. Now this is a minimization problem. At some point, after you start processing, at some point, it gives you the optimal solution. This optimal solution is not the optimal solution of the original problem. This optimal solution is the optimal solution of phase one with this objective function. But the optimal solution in this case is talking to you. It is telling you whether it is at a feasible solution or not. Feasible solution of the original problem because remember we do not change the constraint set. It is the same constraint set. So when I get to the optimal solution of this, that solution is either feasible for the original problem or not. It is feasible if your solution ends up to be the minimum of Z prime ends up to be zero. which can happen when all the artificial variables have left the basis. Or they may be in the basis, but their value on the right-hand side is zero. If that is the case, then you say, aha, this is a basic feasible solution for the original problem. If that doesn't happen, then you stop there and say, problem has no feasible region this problem is infeasible. You don't do any to phase two or continue going. Okay. In big M, you may have to do ten of them to reach a point and you say, oh, this problem is infeasible. But in this case, you may be doing two, three tableaus and you get the indication that the problem is infeasible. So let's do a simple example. Let's make a problem, maximize. Well, the standard form of the problem, standard form of the problem, minus S1, no change in here and plus S2, S1 and S2 greater than or equal to zero. This will go away, that will go away. This becomes Z minus, minus and minus equal zero.
Then I will add artificial variables. I'm dealing now with here. Then I will add artificial variables. I would add an R1 here, an R2 here, and nothing in here. I will add R1, R2 greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, depending on whether I want to do big M or two phase, there is a difference in here at this point in time. If I wanted to do the big M, I would add plus MR1 here, plus MR2 there. If I want to do the two phase, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to put Z prime. It's actually like this. Minimize Z prime equal R1 plus R2. And when I convert it into standard form, it would be Z prime minus R1 minus R2 equals zero. I will set up the phase one. I will set up the phase one problem, Z prime, X1, X2, X3, X1, X2, X3, there is S1 and S2, and there is R1 and R2. These are all the same procedures that we do for the big M as well, but with a different objective function. So we will select our basic variables. Which one of these variables can be used as basic variable? R1, R2, and S2. It needs to be associated with, a, with an identity matrix. It has to have one coefficient plus one coefficient in one constraints and nowhere else. Now, R1, R2, and S2 have that condition. S1 doesn't have that because its coefficient is negative. X3 doesn't have that because it has coefficient here, 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 and wherever else. However, when, when you use that concept and you put R1, R2, and S2 in here, you will run into a little conflict. And that happens with this, both big M and two-phase. You run into a little conflict. And what is that conflict? That conflict is that as you put those numbers in here, zero, 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 there is nothing in there, but there is a negative one and there is a negative one in here. Now the rest is okay. So you have a one, zero, zero, and you have a zero, one, zero, and under S2, you have 0, 0, 1. Okay. Regardless of anything else in here, regardless of anything else in here, you look in here and say, this has the condition, but there is a conflict in here. For these things to be basic variable, those two numbers need to go away and become zero. And to do that, you just multiply. You need to get rid of that one. That's R2, so you will multiply R2. That's the only place that R2 exists. Why don't I multiply this? Because there is no R2 here. I can't get rid of that. The only place that I can get rid of that is where there is an R2. So that's why I'm multiplying this by 1 
and add it up here. But I will do that for the whole line. I would do that. I would do that for R1 also. So I would get rid of that. And I don't need to do anything for S2 because it's already in a form of um, identity matrix column. So the only thing that I need to do is just convert this into a legitimate tableau. Putting the numbers 1, 2, minus 1, 1, 2, minus 1, and 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, and minus 1, 2, and 1, minus 1, 2, and 1. Uh, on the right hand side, 10, 8, 7, 10, 8, 7. Multiplying that row and that row by 1. Remember, if you had the big M, you would be multiplying this by M. Okay, yes, sir? Thank you. Negative 1, 0, 0. Thank you. So you do that. And it's very simple because the numbers are very simple. You're multiplying this row by one, this row by one, and adding it up there. You can do them at the same time. So you can add these two numbers, multiply them by one, add these two numbers, multiply them by one, add these two, and, and so on. So this will end up to be three. This would end up to be two. This would end up to be one. This would end up to be minus 1. This is 0. This is going to be 0. This is going to be 0. And this is going to be 18. Now, this is a legitimate tableau. However, this is a minimization problem. The only difference between minimization and maximization is that in maximization problem, you look for the most negative. In minimization, you look for the most positive. In this case, you look in here. That's the most positive value. So this is your pivot column. And you identify the min ratio you look at the critical ratio, that's 10 over 1, that's 8 over 2, and this one doesn't need any calculation. Why doesn't it need any calculation? Because the entry is negative. So 10 and the 4, this is your pivot row, and that is your pivot. As you noticed, R2 is leaving the R2 is leaving the tableau. Is leaving the basis. This is called the basis. These are basic variables. So this basic variable leaves the basis, becomes non-basic. Anything becoming non-basic becomes zero. So this will leave the basis, and x1 will enter into the basis. Now, when you process it, you go to the next tableau. If needed, you go to another tableau. If you need it, you go to another tableau. But usually, it works in the number of basic variables, the number of artificial variables that you have. You have two artificial variables. Most probably, you will do it in two steps. So essentially, the idea is to get rid of the artificial variables, because those are the only ones that exist in the, here. There's no x1, there's no x2. So minim minimizing this is minimizing dealing with the artificial variables, getting artificial variables out of the basis. So when you solve this, 
you would end up with an optimal solution. And when would an optimal solution happen? The optimal solution will happen when all these R's are, are out of the basis. When they are out of the basis, it means they are non-basic, they are zero. So what is the summation of all zeros? It's zero. And that's the best you can do, adding a bunch of greater than or equal zero numbers, the best you can do is zero. You can never get negative. The best you can do is just zero. And if that happens, you will get a zero in here. And but again, it doesn't need everything to leave. R1 can stay here, but across from it, if I have zero, everything is okay. Because there is still going to be zero. At that point, when you get to that point, when you get to that point, you say, this tableau is optimal. Optimality of this tableau means I have a basic feasible solution. Optimality of this tableau means I have a basic feasible solution. At that point, you say, okay, I have a basic feasible solution. Let me start the next step. And the next step in two phase is to say end of phase one, start of phase two. With the start of phase two, you keep the tableau, the final tableau, the optimal tableau. But you will erase the z values that you have. You will erase the z prime value for the phase one and you put the original and you would put the original objective function in the tableau in standard form. Don't forget that. We do not put it as the original values that, that we have on the problem in standard form. And that's what will create the new tableau. But the moment that you do that, you will run into a conflict, the same conflict that you ran into at the start, which means the tableau becomes not a legitimate tableau. Again, you need to process the tableau. Maybe there is going to be an X1 in here, and when you put the new objective function in here, there is going to be a number in here. In that case, you need to again multiply the x2 row by that number added up there to get rid of that coefficient. That's just the essence of the two phase and it's, it's a very simple process. It's m much more manageable, less headache than, than big M. Okay? One, two. Yes? Okay. So I Remember how you said when we were doing Big M that you won't look for optimality in it unless it's feasible. So I thought with the first phase you're finding, like you said, the basic feasible solution. So you wouldn't reach optimality in the first phase. However, you would reach a feasible region, which tells you to start phase two. Because mm -hmm. you would like, okay, this is optimal if, but I didn't get it because I thought you're not looking for optimality. It's just, you have to first look for feasibility. It's the optimal for the for this problem. We first optimize for this problem, but this is not the original problem. It's not the original objective function. We will do that for this problem, and this problem will tell us whether we are at the basic feasible solution or not. Now, again, as I said, with the big M, you may have to go 10 steps before you find out that the problem is infeasible. In here, you probably go two, three steps and it will tell you the problem is infeasible. When would the problem be infeasible? You reach optimality here. What do you mean you reach optimality? It means you won't have any positive value. This is a minimization. You won't have any positive value in here. Can't go, can't go any further. You say optimality is reached. But then you look in here. And you say, oh, I have R2 here, and the value in here is 7. 
I reach the optimality, but I have a artificial variable. I can reach optimality, but with that penalty that I have in there. At that point, you say, this problem doesn't have a feasible region. So would it still the be problem. optimal? Because no. I'm just confused on how you keep saying we reach optimality, however, it's... Important. It's the optimality of this problem. Oh, okay. It's not the original problem. We will do this problem to extend to the original problem. We will do this problem to extend it to the original problem. If this problem reaches optimality, but it has artificial variables in it with a positive value, then you make your claim to the original problem. So original problem is infeasible. This problem is not invisible because you solved it and you got an answer for this problem. <coughs> but the original problem is infeasible. Okay. There are, there, are two, there are two conditions totally separate from each other. One is the feasibility condition. The feasibility condition deals with the constraints. Whether the values that you are plugging in will match these signs. If matches that sign, then you have a feasible solution. Optimality deals with the objective function, has nothing to do with the feasibility. Optimality deals with that. So the two conditions you always talk about is whether the feasibility condition is satisfied whether the optimality condition is satisfied. Remember what we said underneath the tableau. If the solution is infeasible, there is no meaning in saying whether it's optimal or not. Not, not at all. So yes. what if you're in the first phase, right, and like all your artificial variables are now zero, however you still haven't reached optimality because they're still positives and you're zero? Would you still no, well, have I'll to do a, a, a couple of examples for you. Right? Would you stop those variables? Hold on. Let, let me finish my example. Let me do this and then I'll finish my example. Okay. 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 Okay.
5x1 plus 2x2 plus x3. So I would put in here minus 5, minus 3, minus 2, and minus 1, and 0, 0, 0, 0 in there. Okay? So I'll put that in there. The next thing that, that I do that I don't do in big M is to drop these two from the tableau. So I'll erase all that and that reduces the calculation even further. Now notice that x1 is here, x2 is here. These are okay, but these are not okay. Tableau is not legitimate. So you will again do the same thing. Multiply this by 5, add it here. Multiply this by 2, add it up there. And it will create your new objective function, legitimate tableau. From that point, it's just a regular simplex. Keep going. You're starting with a basic feasible solution, and you keep going, and you are going to be okay. Thank you.